Good afternoon. My name is Ginger Driscoll Simpson and I'm the author of All Roads Lead to Dallas. This is Far Away, The Journey Begins, and is actually book one of a trilogy. So I would like to read a short excerpt to give you a feel for the book. She approached the door, wishing she wasn't still wearing the blue leather, but she would never have had time to change and get out before Marcus insisted on driving her. Looking down at her cuffs, she realized it was the same blue color as the shirt he had worn on Friday night, the one she'd clutched so desperately as he kissed her. Stumbling over the step, she sighed and pushed all thoughts of Friday night out of her head. Straightening her shoulders, tossing her hair, and taking a deep breath, she pushed the doorbell button with a blue leather-clad finger. The low tones of the doorbell floated through the air on the other side of the door. She tugged at her driving gloves as she waited. This was work, just work, and all work. She'd keep it light, professional. She could do that. Thank him for the flowers, give him an update on her weekend trips, excuse herself, and get out of Dodge. No harm, no foul, as Maggie would say, easy peasy. Then he opened the door. She forgot all about work. She forgot all about updates. She forgot about breathing. She forgot how to speak. He swung the door wide, looking out at eye level over her head. Then he looked down. She couldn't read his expression, but she could sure see him. She'd never seen him in casual wear before. He wore a tight-fitting black t-shirt with Miami Vice in big blue and purple letters, and this over super tight faded blue jeans. He was barefoot, his hair was tousled just right, like he'd rolled out of bed, or had had her fingers running through it. She swallowed hard. The non-smiling lips were perfect. Blinking rapidly, she tried in vain to stop the blush she felt rising from her stomach to her face. <clears throat> hey, she finally managed to croak out, having to clear her throat. His head tilted toward his left shoulder. His eyes softened, and he smiled, that smile. The one that made her knees weak, made it harder to breathe. Hey, yourself, he answered back, stepping to the side. Please, come in. The doorbell had startled him. He'd actually dozed off on the sofa. Sitting up, groggy, he ran his fingers through his hair. Who would be at the door at this time of day? His stomach growled, reminding him it was almost lunchtime. He shuffled to the door, yanked it open, but saw no one there. Confused, he glanced down. And there she was, all five feet nothing decked out in blue leather slacks and jacket, blue silk blouse undone at the top. He could even see a bit of blue lace bra strap. His mouth went dry. He couldn't speak. He couldn't move. He just stared, wondering if he was dreaming. Hey, she had said in that soft, almost southern, sexy whisper. He forgot where he was. He forgot about Camille. He forgot everything except the feel of her in his arms when they danced Friday night. He remembered that kiss under the moonlight. He remembered the bay shimmering behind the stars, rivaling her eyes for attention. Hey, yourself, he answered back, stepping to the side. Please, come in. Thank you. She clutched the chain of strap of her purse tightly, hoping he wouldn't notice her shaking. I didn't know your home number, or I would have called first. Not a problem. May I get you something? Iced tea? Yes, thank you. That would be lovely. The brick entry step continues through to the inside. To her right was a flight of steps leading to the second floor. In front of her was an expanse of light oak floors and open space. To her left, with the windows, was the alcove. There was a baby grand piano. Her breath caught and her heart jumped. It was beautiful. The glossy top was covered with framed photos and the open keyboard faced the windows. <sighs> She had angled it so she could see the sunset as she played. She stepped down, checking out the rest of the room. Make yourself comfortable, he said, heading for the kitchen. She wandered around. The white sofa with the big colorful pillows made her smile. A large rattan steamer trunk served as a coffee table. Two white and gold King Louis chairs faced the sofa, their backs to a set of French doors nestled between floor to ceiling bookcases. So many books! But she was drawn to the alcove with its prize. 
The few rare happy memories of her childhood were her piano lessons. Oh, how she had loved to play. The lessons began when she was seven, and she continued to play until she was sixteen, just before everything in her world changed. She'd not touched a piano since. But the soft ivory keys were calling her, begging to be played. She touched the keys lovingly. She hadn't meant to play, hadn't even realized she was. She just stood, eyes closed, head tilted, to hear better, a smile on her face. Don't touch that! Her eyes flew open, her right hand stopped in midair. His face was thunderous, his eyes furious. Glancing down, she saw her hands poised above the keys. It was then that she noticed the photos directly in front of her. I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean anything. We can talk outside. He strode angrily toward the French doors. Okay. She stepped around the piano and followed. With a trembling hand, she took the offered glass of tea so he could open the door. She stepped out quickly. Mm -hmm.